Hi, it's week three. I know I'm a little bit late, and I do apologize for the confusion last week, by the way, about the, uh, uh, the due dates. But, you know, it's the Constitution, so I guess spending an extra day on the Constitution isn't so bad. I apologize for being a little bit late on this video. Like many of you, I was uh, watching the Super Bowl last Sunday, and it was quite an interesting Super Bowl, and a little bit of a surprise, you know? It's, politics and sports are the same. You just can't predict what's gonna happen next. So that was kind of fun. Anyway, uh, this week we're talking about federalism, and usually what I like to do is use visual aids on federalism, and normally what I do is I use cake because they, there's this talk about layer cake federalism, which means that the federal government is above the state government and they're both very neatly separated, and what we're learning, of course, that federalism really uh, is more like a marble cake, where the federal and state governments kind of blend and you know, what is the federal responsibility, what the state responsibility is tied together. Uh, certainly we see that in healthcare, where part of the healthcare system is managed by the states, some of it by the federal government. We see that in all sorts of issues. And I know one of the big issues right now with federalism is the issue of legalized marijuana. Um, a number of states, including Colorado, um, I'm assuming you're all here, but if you're not, including my state of Colorado, have um, legalized marijuana. It is still illegal at the federal level. And in fact, uh, according to the Constitution, uh, federal law takes precedence over state law. And you think, well, what's wrong with just allowing Colorado by itself uh, to legalize marijuana? Well, think about it from the standpoint of Wyoming. Uh, Wyoming marijuana is not legal. And people could still, you know, Cheyenne is very close to Fort Collins. People could still go from Fort Collins to Cheyenne take marijuana into Wyoming because it's legal in Colorado. And so it does become a bit of a federal issue. Now, we don't want to have, you know, walls around Colorado to other states. So um, it's the federal government that has to step in. And why? Because the federal government is responsible for interstate commerce, the Commerce Clause. Now, let me get to my uh, visual aid, which is my friend Loki here. Um, Loki actually is a adopted dog. He's a Shih Tzu but he used to work in a puppy mill. And, and by work, you know, it sounds like fun, but when we found him, he was all matted and uh, just, just emaciated and, and really just not treated well. Of course, he's treated very well now, aren't you, Loke? But um, so, you know, it, it, you know, a lot of people think puppy mills are bad things. And so you say, well, you know, we'll make puppy mills illegal in certain states and states have done that. They've made uh, legislation to make sure that dogs are treated treated humanely. However, one of the problems is that uh, a state could make puppy mills illegal, but people bring in dogs from other states. And so um, this is why, you know, dogs like Loki get treated the way he was um, and other dogs. Uh, you may have heard of Harley if you follow uh, puppy mill dogs on, on social media. And so now states have taken another step. Besides simply saying puppy mills are illegal in our state, now they're saying that pet stores cannot um, buy from puppy mills. And again, it has to do with interstate commerce, but the states are really uh, starting to step in because it's, it's understood that actions in one state affect another state. And so this, this issue of states' rights versus federal rights is a very complicated one uh, when we look at a number of issues. Anyway, I hope you're enjoying the material for this week. It is interesting, and I will see you soon. Bye.